Welcome to another episode of Full Build Friday, where I try to build a character from a comic, game, or similar source using the baseline rules of Pathfinder 2nd Edition and the Path Builder app. I dislike using the same source multiple weeks in a row, but I already had a Lowy built and ready to ship by the time that I learned of this latest character's release date. So, unfortunately, we will be double dipping into League this week as I build its newest champ, Wei, the Visionary. Before we start making our masterpiece, let's easel in with some build goals. Lu Kai Hui is an artillery mage from League of Legends who uses art as a weapon. Each of his basic abilities has three options, leaving him with a total of 10 activated abilities. His passive is Signature of the Visionary, which marks enemies whenever he hits them with an ability. When he hits an already marked enemy, the mark detonates, dealing damage around them. His subject disaster grants him access to devastating fire, which launches an exploding fireball, severing bolt, which calls down a bolt of lightning in an area, and molten fissure, which summons lava from the ground in a line that leaves behind hazardous terrain. His subject serenity has more utility focused abilities, such as fleeting current, which makes an area that hastens him and his allies, pool of reflection, which creates a shield for his allies standing within it, and finally Stirring Lights, which summons three swirling flames that enhance his attacks. His final basic ability is Subject Torment, which includes Grim Visage, that deals magic damage and fears an enemy, Gaze of the Abyss, that summons an eye that focuses on an enemy before rooting them, and then Crushing Maw, that causes a mouth to form in the ground that bites enemies and drags them towards the middle of it. His final ability, his ultimate ability, is Spiraling Despair. This launches a distilled droplet of deepest despair that afflicts an enemy with a growing aura of slow before it detonates with dire damage. When it comes to lore, Wei was born to the Temple of Koyain, an ancient conservatory for the arts, and learned their paint magic. However, his unique vision and his creativity was stifled by the more traditional methods. Despite his disagreements with the elders, he was horrified when his temple home was destroyed by Jin, leaving him as the sole survivor. Armed with only his paintbrush and palette, Wei has been on a journey of self-discovery ever since. We have our primer, so let's start laying down a top coat with the ancestry background and class for this painting proliferator of Pai Shog. This build sticks to the human ancestry, but Wei is described as having eyes that shift in color and hue, and that will be represented through the Gonzi heritage. This grants him access to a feat that is a fantastic fit for him, making the first ancestry feat choice a little tough. Ultimately, I favored Function over Form and had him take Adapted Cantrip, which will allow him to learn Rousing Splash. This matches his Pool of Reflection's shielding ability while sticking to its water theme, though it is a single target effect, making it a little weaker. Given his rearing in an art temple, the artist background made the most sense for Hui. This gets him crafting and the specialty crafting skill feat to go along with it. From that, artistry makes the most sense for the character, to go along with the art lore skill that he becomes trained in. The array of arcane abilities wielded by this artistic artillerist saw me leaning into the wizard class. For now, there aren't many of the new schools that would really fit him, leading to him attending the School of Unified Magical Theory, which will grant him a first level wizard feat. Then, for his arcane thesis, he uses experimental spell shaping, so that he can put his own spin, his own artistic flourish, on the spells that he casts. This nets him another first level wizard feat, though this one specifically has to be a spell shaping feat. So with those options, he will take both reach spell and widen spell, letting him hit a wider swath of enemies. As a wizard, he's automatically trained in arcana, and will also be trained in acrobatics, athletics, intimidation, occultism, religion, and society. Ignition from his cantrips is a bit weaker at range, but is a nice early nod to devastating fire. From his first rank spells, we have Thunder Strike for his Severing Bolt and Gravitational Pool to at least represent the pooling of Crushing Maw, though this ends up drawing enemies closer to Wei, which we probably honestly don't want. There's also Scorching Blast as a slight point to Stirring Lights, giving him two beams that he can fire off real quick. While not representative of his abilities, I do also like Dizzying Colors, and other spells like this down the line, simply for the artistry of it. It allows Hui to just unleash a potent palette of punishing power. As I said, I'd like Hui putting his own spin on his spells with spell shaping feats, and at second level he takes up the spell trickster dedication for a similar reason. With many of his abilities being produced by his spells, he can be a little free with his feats, he's got a little bit more room to play around with. 
This nets him Shining Arms and Forceful Push, which allow him to respectively modify Light and Telekinetic Hand, and add his own style to them. I chose these specific ones because League is a game focused on fighting, and these are some of the more combat-oriented options. Though take any that tickle your fancy. While Hui already has art lore from his background, by taking additional lore for it, he can ensure that it scales automatically, freeing up skill increases he would otherwise spend on it. At third level, Incredible Initiative helps him get a jump in combat, something critical for casters, especially with the area effects that he lays out. His skill increase goes to Arcana, boosting it to Expert, and then he also gains access to second rank spells. There's a couple good ones in this block, and we'll start off with Sudden Bolt. This is an option for a Severing Bolt, even its name gets super close, and has higher damage but shorter range than his Thunderstrike. He can still extend that range with Reach Spell, but it never quite reaches the range of Thunderstrike. He'll also pick up Lose Time's Arrow. This can make his allies quickened with an action that can only be used to move, which is a nice fit for his Fleeting Current, allowing him to hasten on his teammates, though it doesn't quite match the area that this ability creates. For his 4th level class feat, Wei will take Cantrip Expansion, giving him more magic to wield so that he can reliably keep stocked up on the cantrips that take advantage of his spell trickster archetype. Wei's magic covers a wide variety of styles and types, and trick magic item allows them to make use of wands and scrolls to do just that. Another second rank spell I want to mention at this point is Flame Wisp. While I don't envision this specific character striking all that much, this does give him three floating orbs that empowers attacks, just like his stirring lights. This is a truer representation of the ability than Scorching Blast, but one that might be harder for him to actually use. He had to take Adapted Cantrip at first level for his Rousing Splash, but at fifth level, he'll take the other super solid option I considered, Creative Prodigy. Again, he's already got art lore, but this does at least make him trained in deception and performance. He also gets a skill increase that we will apply to Occultism, bumping it up to Expert. Now, a lot of people say that casters really start coming online at fifth level, and there are certainly some fantastic spells at 3rd rank to pick from. Firstly, Fireball better matches the airy explosion of his devastating fire, though it might even be a little bit too big. There's also Cave Fangs, which is kind of just a fireball of a different name, but it causes the ground to bite the victim, like his crushing maul, and has the nice touch of leaving behind some difficult terrain. With 6th level, Hui can take Confounding Image from his archetype, though he will need to have picked up Mirror Image by this point. While this spell doesn't represent any of his abilities, it's a nice defensive effect, and I like the idea of Hui painting a self-portrait of himself for this spell. As for his skill feat, I've never met an artist that wasn't already extremely critical of their own work, and Vicious Critique is something to represent that, though Hui doesn't seem quite as caustic as this skill feat suggests. For other third rank spells, there's Haste for many of the same reasons as Loose Time's Arrow, and more importantly, there's Gravity Well. This captures the dragging effect of his crushing maw, pulling victims to a central point, but unfortunately doesn't deal any damage. I do have plans for that, but we aren't quite there yet. Toughness as Wei's 7th level general feat is mainly to make sure our Wistful Wizard doesn't get wiped out. Then he'll increase his occultism to Master. Both spells I'm looking at for this level are actually again from 3rd rank. Agonizing Despair is a great match for Grim Visage, by virtue of inflicting fear and damage, just like this ability. He'll also take Impending Doom, which will be a rough way of representing his Spiraling Despair. While it lacks the expanding aura, it does include increasingly debilitating effects that end in a big pop of damage. Looking at his 8th level class feats, I actually really like Split Slot. This might not seem like an obvious choice at first glance, but this lets him put two spells into a slot that he must ultimately choose between. Just like how when he casts a spell from one of his art subjects, he is temporarily locked out of that subject's other spells. Bizarre magic as a skill feat, I feel, helps to represent his mixing of art and arcana, making it difficult for non-artists to decipher his works. Airlift is a spell that stands out to me here, and one that is actually 4th level. But this is another option for Fleeting Current by letting Quay speed up his allies and the fact that it has everybody move together, works nicely for the limited area affected by Fleeting Current. Coming in at 9th level is Anarchic Arcana, which gives him some extra spells while drawing upon his Gonzi heritage. Speaking of Arcana, a skill increase will bump that up to Master. For spells, we're looking at Blazing Fissure for Molten Fissure, which I was super excited about, until I realized that this spell doesn't leave behind any sort of difficult or hazardous terrain. It's just a line of damage. 
Still, at least this is a perfect visual match for this ability. He can also take Scouting Eye, which at least reveals an area as per Gaze of the Abyss. The follow-up damage in Root is way harder to do, and while possible, isn't capable through a spell like this that grants sight alone. We got a big class feat at 10th level with Quicken Casting. While it can only be used once per day, this allows him to reduce the actions that cast a spell by one. He can use this on Gravity Well to drag everybody into the center of a Cave Fangs to really capture his crushing maul, while also being a really nice combination of effects. Then, to get a bit more art into our artist, Huey takes Tattoo Artist as a skill feat, allowing him to turn his skin, and the skin of others, into a canvas. The last spell that really stands out for me at this rank is Wave of Despair, being an area effect with Despair in the name that can slow people, akin to Spiraling Despair. He also gets to increase his nature to Trained because of a boost to Intelligence. At 11th level, Huey will take Fleet, just to bolster his speed a bit. With Tap 2 Artist from his last level, he'll start increasing his crafting to Expert. The spell Ravenous Darkness comes to mind from among his 6th rank spells, feeling akin to Crushing Maw again, and including some Lockdown, but lacking in the drag to the center of it. It does match nicely though with the dark themes of his Torment subject. By the time we reach 12th level, we have to start paying attention to spell shaping feats. His Arcane Thesis only grants him an extra spell shaping feat of half his level or lower, so while he could pass up on lower level feats here and there, and pick them up with his extra feat, he needs to start grabbing some now and will take overwhelming energy so that his spells can punch through the resistances of his enemies. Hopefully a varied spell list will make it so he doesn't have to worry about this, but this feat does reduce that concern even further. For his skill feats, Tweak Appearances takes his artistic sensibilities in a different direction, but will stick to the general idea. For his 13th level Ancestry feat, he can take Shadow Pact, granting him some ability to create artistic sculptures and proving that art truly is pain. He'll also take a skill increase to crafting, getting that to master. Hungry Depths from amongst his 7th rank spells is yet another spell that feels thematically appropriate for crushing Maw. Somewhat ironically considering his other abilities that we've already covered, 14th level's Secondary Detonation Array is intended to mimic the effects of his passive, his signature of the Visionary. Admittedly, its explosion triggers after a round and is linked to an area, rather than being based off of comboing spells, but is otherwise a solid fit. There is also Detonating Spell, which you could start taking at 12th level with his Arcane Thesis, which has no delay and deals smaller damage. Looking at his skill feats, Wei seems like a guy that would have some disturbing knowledge, and with his ability to inflict fears on enemies, this slots right in. He'll take Incredible Investiture as his 15th level general feat, while increasing his occultism to Legendary. Unrelenting Observation is another vision-based spell granted at 8th rank that can at least kind of suit his Gaze of the Abyss. Given his focus on art and colors, I like Scintillating Spell for his 16th level class feat, even if its effects don't quite match his abilities. Since he has Tattoo Artist, he might as well benefit from Legendary Tattoo Artist, which has the added bonus of being a skill feat that increases his crafting to Legendary. Usually, I'm pretty down on Heroic Presence as a 17th level Ancestry feat, but given the ability of his Reflecting Pool to potentially shield his entire team, I do kind of like it here. He'll also increase his Arcana to Legendary. At level 18, he can take infinite possibilities for much the same reason as his earlier split slot. With that Legendary Arcana, it's probably not a bad idea to take Unified Theory, but my instincts push me towards impeccable crafting, so he's even better at his artistry, which seems to be his focus. Coming up at 19th level is Featherstep, just in case he finds himself stepping into the rubble left behind by his Cave Fangs. He'll also increase his Nature Skill to Expert to make use of Trick Magic Item. Finally, with all the spell shape feats that he's taken and can pick up with his arcane thesis, spell shape mastery is a no-brainer at 20th level. This can lead to some fun combinations. For example, he could quicken casting a gravity well, and then do a secondary detonation fireball or similar instantaneous damage spell. If he sets up cave fangs beforehand, he could drag them into an area of difficult terrain, making it harder to escape the upcoming explosion from it. For his final skill feat, he can take Unified Theory, so that he can use Arcana to trick magic item even for primal and occult spells. A final increase to intelligence sees him become trained in diplomacy. In a free archetype game, Wei can explore his spell tricks or dedication much more deeply than I did, taking its other effects so he probably gets the most benefit out of the ones that modify Fireball, unless he learns the other spells. Other than that, Wei's art is tied to his emotions, which could lend well to the cathartic mage archetype though it's hard to say which emotion fits him best. Maybe Misery? I'll leave that up to you. 
there's always quite a bit to cover when it comes to casters, but that is the end of the build. Let's take a moment to review our Voodoo Versed Visionary. Wei is a Gonzi human wizard and artist who studied at the School of Unified Magical Theory and developed an arcane thesis on experimental spell shaping. He uses the secondary detonation array to represent his signature of the visionary. He uses the secondary detonation array to represent his signature of the visionary, but by level 12, Wei can also start taking detonating spell through the extra spell shape feat granted by his arcane thesis. His actual abilities come entirely from his spells. The disaster subject, Fireball or Ignition can create devastating fire, Thunderstrike or Sudden Bolt work well for Severing Bolt, and Blazing Fissure covers at least the appearance of Molten Fissure, while Spike Stones can create damaging ground. With the focus on utility and serenity, he'll use options such as Loose Time's Arrow, Haste and Airlift for his Fleeting Current, the Rousing Splash and Heroic Presence for his Shield Granting Pool of Reflection, and finally Flame Wisp or Scorching Blast for his Stirring Lights. The Torment subject was the hardest to replicate, though Grim Visage is the easiest among these options, using spells such as Fear or Agonizing Despair, the latter of which actually deals damage to better go along with it. On the opposite end of the spectrum is Gaze of the Abyss, which was the hardest to create. There are plenty of spells to spy on targets, such as Unrelenting Observation and Scouting Eye, but nothing to make the eye launch at a target and deal damage. Finally, Crushing Maw has a couple of ways to accomplish it, but the best is probably using Quicken Casting to layer K Fangs for the actual bite with Gravity Well to drag them to its center. A quicker option is simply Ravenous Darkness or Hungry Depths, which fits the concept but not quite the effect. His final ability is best represented through Impending Doom, with a way that it builds up debilitating effects before dealing damage. You can also mix this with Wave of Despair to get the area slow. His heavy use of spell shapes and the spell tricks through dedication allow him to put his own artistic flourish on his spells, which he can also explore through tattoo artists and feats such as specialty crafting. Finally, split slot and infinite possibilities are nods to each subject opening up one of three abilities that he can cast at a time. This pensive painter peppers prosecuting players with potent pie shogue while protecting his patrons, proving himself and his plentiful palette to be pretty powerful, despite a petulant personality. Be sure to let me know what you think of this build, and what other characters you might like to see. You can check out the blog for a breakdown that includes item suggestions and a fuller exploration of the build's use in a Freak Archetype game. That, along with the Monster Monday Twitter and Discord, are linked in the description below. Thanks for watching, have a fantastic Friday, and I'll see you next week with a non-league build. I promise.